Hello. For those who don't know me, my name is Eric. Five years ago, I converted this marvelous minivan that I love so much. When it was completed, I waited a year before publishing my van tour. I wanted to really test everything before sharing the van build. In the last five years, I have traveled from coast to coast of the United States, went on my annual trip from Canada to Florida, explored the Canadian Maritimes, the north coast of Quebec, traveled Ontario and made numerous trips in New England for surfing, hiking, or sightseeing. Of course, I have also been all over Quebec, the province in Canada where I live. My van is my jewel and I love it. I never get tired of living in it. I always try to improve it and improve my personal way of living in it in order to make traveling simple, fun and comfortable. Nowadays, you can watch lots of videos where people have used some of my ideas and concepts. I sincerely want to thank everyone who have taken the time to refer back to my channel. I really appreciate it. In this video, you will see what I would have done differently in the initial build. I definitely invite you to watch or rewatch my initial van tour. It provides details not shown in the current video. At the end of the video, I will leave a link. Now, let's see what I have done to improve my van conversion over the last 5 years. New faucet. The water faucet is the first thing I changed. On the first version, I had installed a bathroom faucet. I was really enjoying the look of it, but the functionality was not that great. The neck was too small. When you think minivan conversion, you think small but it does not have to be that small. I ended up with too much water on the counter. The space to wash fruits, vegetables, dishes, etc. was too restrictive. This was even worse on an uneven ground when the space between the running water and the sink could be reduced. Parenthesis, seriously, I still don't get why there are so many bathroom faucets with such a short neck that leads us to washing our hands on the sink rather than into the sink. Beware of choosing something roomy. Fortunately, I ended up finding a faucet that looks good and is functional. I think that things must be functional first, but it is also important to enjoy your environment. Shower cabinet. I used my solar shower for a year without a shower cabinet. What a puzzle and a waste of time that was to find a private place to get a shower. Having a shower cabinet changes everything. You save time trying to find an ultra private spot to shower and you can enjoy your shower without that feeling of having to rush. Plus it is so cheap and easy to do. I am so stoked about it that I have 3 videos on this subject. The first is how to do the shower cabinet, the second why I made the choice to build an external shower and the third how to build a solar shower. You will find links to these videos in my playlists about van conversion techniques and van conversion concepts. Check out the comment section to find the links. By the way, washing yourself with a swim soup renders cleaning certain body parts very difficult and often not as well as one would wish. Having a shower cabinet seems unavoidable to me. Second fan. A fan is a must, a second fan also. This is especially true if you are two living in the van. On very warm nights, consider that both persons are generating heat. Fans can be used at night, but also often during the day, during lunch or when taking a nap. No CM net. Having mosquito nets is essential. If you travel in a country with what they call in Florida no CM, you will need a different set of bug nets. 
NoCM are very tiny bugs that can go through a regular mosquito screen. So tiny that they are called in a slang language NoCM for no see them. See the difference between the two nets that I use. No CM nets are the ones usually used for tents. Why not use only a no CM net? Because the mesh size significantly reduces ventilation. If you go where they go, it is essential to have the proper mesh. I always try to buy locally, but in this case, I think that it is preferable to order online in order to buy the right product and to be sure to build the window screens before heading there. By the way, I also have on my channel a video on how to make the bug screens. Candle lanterns. I have added a few candle lanterns to my arsenal against cold weather. You can hear my thoughts about this in my video Van Life in Cold and Warm Temperatures. I now have 4 candle lanterns. They are so useful against cold and humidity and so much fun to create a nice mood in the van. Removed the third seat. My bed is easily removable. When I did my van conversion, I kept a seat for the third row of seats. Since it was a stow and go seat, it was easy to keep. Because I do long canoe runs, with a third seat, someone could easily drop us at the starting point of the expedition and pick us up days later at the retrieve point at the end of the run. That's why the 2 plus 1 seat arrangement seemed good. I finally removed it however, since I found the extra space in the basement more useful overall. It is a good place to store items you need less often. Linings in the kitchen cabinets. To protect the wood of the kitchen cabinets, I cut and placed plastic placemats. Since there is occasional water manipulation inside it, it is a cheap way to protect the wood against possible water drops. It also gives a more interesting and personal finish without adding weight or paint odor. I just love those qualities. Magnet plate. There's not a lot of space in a minivan to bring back souvenirs. Mine are simple magnets. I always need to add more space for them. So I have added metallic plates. Again, I would say that it is important to have a personified interior decoration. The van must be a sanctuary where you should feel great. A minimum of personification and aesthetics is important to fully appreciate the van. When you leave months at a time, it is your own. Battery monitor. I really enjoy having a van with complete autonomy. And that means an electric energy setup. It is so cool to stay as long as you want, where you want, and not having to owe anything to anyone. No reloading required, no engine running time required, traveling as deep as you want, and still having every electric device functional and forever. For my enjoyment, I like to follow every aspect of my electric system. The lack of accuracy of my solar power controller to monitor the state of charge of my battery bugged me. So I added a precise battery monitor. Strangely, this gadget was really not expensive. This is quite rare these days to get a precision tool for a very low price. This was less than $50. I may talk about solar energy metrics in another video. Battery and battery rack. At some point, a cell of my AGM battery broke. I had to replace my battery. After a few calculations, I switched to lithium batteries. This was 3 years ago. I will definitely do a video on the subject of batteries. I invite you to subscribe if you want to learn more from my experience. When I changed my battery setup, I also built a new battery rack definitely more efficient. I am going to share more on this in an upcoming video series about my electric setup. Inverter Everything in my van is optimized with 12V electric devices. Nevertheless, I added an inverter to charge computer batteries 
or whatever device needing charge. This piece of equipment is definitely the least used in my van, but always a good thing to have. Conclusion This is mostly what I have changed to my van conversion after 5 years. I invite you to subscribe to get more videos about van conversion, van life and travel tips. See ya!